Okay. Okay, and you can still see my screen, right? Yep. Okay, sounds good. So again, thanks everybody for joining this call, uh, this series of the Career Go sessions. I know where we help uh, everybody find jobs uh, in this difficult time. Uh, today's session is all about financials. Uh, bring balance to your budget. Uh, again, reminder, this call is going to be recorded and shared in social media and uh, YouTube. So if you're not comfortable being streamed, uh, please leave the session now. Uh, so why do you join this community? Uh, the community normally boosts your networking. So if you are comfortable, please share your LinkedIn profile in the chat. This will help you uh, connect with others and you know grow your network. It also help you, you know, understand some knowledge and, and practice some skills by being in camera, by, you know, uh, leveraging the uh, experience that will be shared by the speaker and also the participants. So we, we work to help see everyone in the job they love. So the call is going to be, uh, you know, the speaker who will speak about, you know, the topic and then we'll leave some time for Q&A at the end. Uh, you can Raise your hand uh, if you want to ask question or maybe write in the chat. Uh, we we try to limit you know questions to two minutes just to give chance for other attendees. At the end of the session, we we run a survey again just to listen to your needs, understand your uh, requirements, and uh, you know address this in future calls. Um, we also take a group selfie at the end uh, as a memory and also to share it in our uh, social media for marketing purpose. Um, you know, this whole community is all about volunteering. Uh, no one is paid here. So if you want to you know, support the speaker by providing kudos and recommendations on LinkedIn, that's definitely a good gesture and also it gets you visibility in your job search. Uh, our promise, you know, if you keep showing up, if you keep uh, you know, uh, learning and applying what you um, get from those sessions, you will get hired within three to six months. This is already been done before uh, so you know as soon as you apply your your um, learnings you get more visibility you get more interviews you get more offers uh, so please uh, do that and you know subscribe to our youtube channel there's tons of great information there uh, about your resume about your linkedin about storytelling you know um, strategies to for job search demos and other things that would definitely uh, boost your uh, job search. Our goal is, you know, uh, ambitious. We want to help thousand plus to be hired in 2021 uh, through those sessions. Uh, already uh, last few weeks, five plus folks already got hired. So, you know, um, there is a good indication that this is working. Those folks were, were joining us uh, for some time now already and they are applying what they learn. So again, I, I, I really emphasize that you need to apply what you learn here to get that visibility. You need to do the homework. Um, so we're asked to you, you know, be curious, uh, ask questions, uh, join and share what you learn with others. This will give you visibility as well uh, everywhere outside. Uh, and again, subscribe to the channel to get the learnings. So coming up uh, this Sunday, I'm going to be speaking about LinkedIn 101. Uh, again, lots of insights about how to use LinkedIn effectively in your job search. And LinkedIn is a powerful tool that is used by most recruiters right now. Um, next Thursday, um, I'm going to share with you an assessment to let you know how to define your targets, you know, understand where you're heading, how do you really reduce the stress and distraction uh, from your job search um, um, uh, no, uh, journey. Uh, the next Sunday, uh, there will be a, a very strong um, uh, speaker. Uh, she has a TED talk before, and she's going to speak about navigating your career with confidence. Uh, I really recommend that you join those next three sessions as well. Uh, all the sessions are already in Eventbrite. If you just scroll down, you will find it. You can just uh, subscribe to it in the same Eventbrite that for this today. But again, we'll, we'll be posting it in Facebook and LinkedIn as well. So for today's topic, bring balance to your budget. Uh, our speaker 
uh, Muhammad Emara. Uh, he holds uh, a business degree and works for Edward Jones as a financial advisor. The objective for today is navigate through the financial system, understand the strategies for controlling debt and improving credit scores, understand everyday terminology uh, in terms of financials, understand different levels of support from government. So with that, uh, I will hand it over to you, Muhammad. Thanks for uh, coming in and uh, we'll ha we're happy to um, have you with us. Uh, well, thank you for, uh, for, uh, for having me. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Hamad Amara. I'm, uh, I work with uh, Edward Jones as a financial advisor. I've been working with them since uh, 2014. I live uh, in Oakville, Ontario. I've been living in uh, in this area since uh, 2011. So uh, I've been here in Oakville for 10 years now. And I was uh, I came in Canada first in 2008. Um, so the the uh, my objective uh, uh, tonight is uh, uh, to give you some some new ways uh, to think about your money. Uh, now I understand that uh, this community is about people who mostly uh, uh, coming new to uh, or just came new to to Canada and like all of us uh, when you come new you you come with uh, from new country with new culture new financial uh, uh, understanding uh, of a financial background financial different financial systems uh, and you may or may not write at this point when you, you give me your time to ex talk to you about how to manage your money. Maybe uh, some of you would be wondering, OK, what money? I'm, I'm just trying to, to, to land the job. That's all good and well. And we understand that. I understand that. I've been through all that. And I'm truly and honestly, I wish when I came in 2008, before I become a financial advisor with Edward Jones, somebody has given me these basic understandings. Uh, uh, it's going to help you m for the most part for managing your uh, uh, financial life, your, your how you deal with your, your money uh, for the rest of, the, uh, of your life here in, uh, uh, in Canada. Uh, so really, uh, uh, we'll talk about understanding your, of your own personal budget and and you see, there's, there's, this, the, this thing is, 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 is very important because uh, it affects, it's not only the how much money you have in the bank, but also it affects what's uh, your credit score, uh, your, your level of, uh, uh, of debt. And these are, some of them are, are new to, uh, terminologies for some of us, but it's important to understand and we will, we will, uh, uh, we will cover that. Uh, talking about finances can can be difficult for some people. Uh, he, he, some 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 of us here would might even have a cringe when when you hear the word budget. Uh, by the end of this presentation, you will have the tools you need to develop the strategy uh, so, so you can uh, put into place uh, to help you uh, balance your spending, your saving, and uh, borrowing needs. Uh, so let's start by talking about. Uh, five uh, uh, five-step process. This is really uh, our bread and butter. We 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 believe uh, this is how we should uh, uh, we should start in any aspect of life, particularly the the financial uh, aspect. So uh, first is your goals. Your goals uh, and the goal of the next person on this on this present uh, uh, presentation or the webinar uh, may be different. But there are consistent process uh, that we rec strongly recommend that uh, we use uh, to start the, the, fi the, the, the financial planning. This can help you define your long term financial goals and build the strategy. To have a clear outlook uh, on your future, your first step is to evaluate where you are today. Then only you can uh, begin to set clear and measurable uh, goals for where you would like to be in the future. When your goals are determined, uh, evaluate if they are realistic or not. So this will be the third step. If these goals is doable, achievable or, or, or not, 
uh, this determination is based on the amount of time you have as uh, to invest as well as the amount of money you will be able to uh, to invest you will be comfortable uh, uh, to to invest this is known our time horizon so this is an, one new term that we are introducing here so time horizon if 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 I want to achieve X goal, so it's basically how much time do I have? So that's number one. Number two, how much money I can put away or I can invest or I can start saving to achieve this uh, 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 particular target. So that's what we call uh, uh, time horizon. If you work with, a, with your own uh, financial advisor, uh, uh, he or she will help you decide uh, which solutions and strategy uh, can help you work toward your goals. Knowing more about the solutions and strategies available to you can help you make more informed decisions uh, about where your money is going and what is uh, what is it doing for you. So once you have a, you have a, a you set your strategy, you can stay on track by periodically evaluating how things are working for you. Is 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 the uh, strategy working or, or not? We just uh, scroll back to. Uh, uh, the, the budgeting one because this is. Uh, oh, let's go to sl slide three, Ahmed, and start with the first step in the process. Ask yourself where I am today, okay? Uh, and this is very very important. Uh, we should consider our uh, investments, cash savings, debt, and income. Often our perception of spending. Uh, and the reality of what we spend can be two worlds apart. Uh, we believe most of most people believe they are reasonable spenders. They believe they are uh, very cautious of the money, but this can be uh, can be very far from from the truth. So budgeting can help you handle uh, get a handle on what you spend you actually spend each month and what income you have to cover. Uh, to those ex those uh, kinds of expenses that uh, you spend, and how much left over to save for the uh, for the future. Many people are surprised at how much they spend each month. They really they, when they sit down and uh, uh, and start working uh, crunching the numbers, they are surprised uh, on on how much they uh, uh, they spend uh, uh, each month. Uh, I recommend that you track uh, your, your expenses and then uh, uh, Ahmed, if you can show the uh, the, the budget, uh, the budget sheet, there is a sheet that we'll be happy to share with you. Uh, I use it with most of my clients. It's something that you do it for yourself. You you, you keep track of you, you, all your uh, types of uh, expenses and we really strongly recommend that you, you run it for one or two months. Uh, be very diligent about Recording every uh, every penny you 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 spend, and then you review it uh, after the first month. Again, you do it for a second month, and then you review you review it after that. Uh, and then I'm I'm pretty sure you will be surprised with uh, with, with the results. But once you do that, you will be able to really decide what kind of changes you need to do. What kind of uh, uh, what we call it. Uh, in our terminology, discretionary uh, spend this this kind of spends. I don't really uh, uh, want to do now, or I can I can live without it basically. Uh, and, and this could help you achieving uh, your your future goal once you know exactly how much is absolutely necessary uh, spends, like mortgage or rent, like utility bill, like uh, food on the table, like. But but there are some other uh, uh, discretionary that things that you can live without that can you can uh, delay the the joy of of buying xyz to 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 help you uh, and use this money to help you for your uh, future goal of course we will not have time to complete this one but uh, you're most welcome to uh, to use it ahmed is, is going to share it uh, with you so let's go back to slide uh, uh, 5 uh, so slide five. So when you start, uh, uh, when you start thinking about about your goals, uh, first we know where we are today. So remember, it's a five-step process. First step, uh, first step is where we are today. Second step is 
Where do I want to be? What are my goals? We try to be as specific as possible. Uh, this will help you determine if your goals are long term, short term or uh, uh, intermediate uh, or even uh, uh, like immediate terms. So so there are usually three to uh, three, three to five different uh, goals for each each household, each person, each family. They would have more than one goal. So we 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 try to categorize them into uh, uh, the goals that you'd like to accomplish in, let's say, six months. OK, this is immediate uh, uh, goals. Uh, one year, this is short term. Five years, this is uh, intermediate term. Ten years and beyond, this is these are uh, uh, long long term uh, goals. Uh, a more immediate goal would be to ensure uh, you constantly have enough enough money, enough cash to uh, to address everyday uh, spending needs. Uh, so that this is the immediate goal. I, I must have enough money to cover my daily or monthly uh, expenses. Uh, a short term goal, a goal for for maybe for one year is to uh, uh, is to, to uh, would be to build a fund for unexpected expenses and emergencies uh, to save for a specific goal such as a vacation. So so. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I I should have uh, maybe I'm gonna go on a uh, on a vacation in a year time or or, or something. Uh, so I should start saving for that. That's a short term uh, uh, goal goal for 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 somebody. Uh, now, uh, in five years uh, goal and intermediate, I'm just giving examples here. Uh, 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 Mid term goal can be thinking about saving uh, for your. Uh, 14 years old uh, child who is going to university in, in four years. So I should start saving for, for their education. Uh, maybe I'm just fresh grad or, or a newcomer to the country. I have to take OSAP to, uh, uh, to to pay for my education. So I should start saving for paying my own uh, uh, my own student, uh, student loan. Maybe I want to buy a new car. So these are uh, it's going to happen maybe in two to three years to five years. This, these are actually all mid midterm goals. Now, if if we look at move to long term goals, uh, and and again, every person is different from the other person. So, if I'm as a newcomer, I want to buy my first home. Is this a short, immediate, uh, immediate term, short term, long term uh, goal? I really don't know. You know better because you, you know your situation. You know which province you're living in. You know how much down payment you can uh, you, you can afford to put. Uh, but this is uh, for most newcomers. I would say that uh, unless they have massive cash savings came uh, they, they come with from uh, back home, uh, it's something that they would start looking at maybe in three to five years after they uh after they they land they get their first job they have a, a fixed uh, stream of income and then they start planning for buying and maybe they're gonna liquidate some of the assets uh, back for uh, at their home country and then they will start looking at buying their uh the, their first home uh so for a long term uh, uh, objective maybe uh 10 years or, or beyond number one or the one that takes the longest period is how am I going to retire comfortably? But there are some other goals. Maybe I want to pay off my debt. I, I already bought my home. I want to pay off my mortgage in 10 years or in 15 years. I want to be debt free after uh, after a specific period of time. Maybe I want to start my own dream business. So I should start saving from now. I take a, a survival job. I take any any type of job, but I want to start my business in 10 years time. And there is a price tag for that. Then I start saving uh, for that. So when you look at all these goals, you will realize that it will take a lot of preparation to save uh, to save the money uh, for, for each and every uh, goal. There are uh, there may even have some competing goals. So you. you any any of us i mean none of us would be into in this meeting if we are, if we are multimillionaires and and we don't we don't we have enough money to do all our uh, our goals so i assume that you would have x amount of uh, of savings or x amount of uh, of disposable or income and you want to do one two three four five six goals so you would have competing goals sometimes was, actually mind, yes maybe, um... We can just, you know, check if, if everybody is OK, uh, have any questions. Just again, I want to give you also another <laughs> a quick pause here. Yeah, sure, sure. 
Yeah, so if, if, if anyone have any questions uh, about what Mohammed just mentioned, uh, please feel free to raise your hand or just come out of mute. Uh, no, I just uh, would like to add something, or maybe in the Mohammed. So, uh, because I'm a newcomer and uh, my wife came as a student, uh, so we are doing our PR process and everything. So, I think, uh, I, I don't know if you guys know about this, but Canada has a, a law or a rule that, like, uh, if you're not at least a PR, uh, you need to pay extra uh one hundred fifty thousand dollars if you are if you're gonna buy a house so i think for most of uh newcomers that are not coming with uh pr so like uh if they come as a student uh, or something like that they i think a uh, home it's uh, not a short-term uh goal <laughs> i just would like i don't know if you knew that i uh, i don't I don't know about you have to pay extra hundred and fifty thousand. Why? It's a fee because uh, because because of the market was so inflated. Uh, they put a fee. I mean, so yeah, okay. the ex the the fifteen percent tax. That's only Ontario, but Ontario and and uh, and, um, uh, and British Columbia. I think the rest of the provinces they don't have this. Is, this is an Ontario law. Uh, oh really? Uh, I thought it was a a federal law. No, and and I guess I'm I'm not quite sure about that. I I guess um, if you are a, a Canadian resident, even if you are not a PR, uh, if you have lived in the country, I'm I'm again this is this is a legal issue. I'm I'm not I'm not sure about it, I'm, but I I I I think this is the case. Uh, if you lived for for a certain number of uh, of years, uh, you will not be treated uh, as a that. resident. Yeah. So, uh, like somebody come with a work permit and, and he's living here for uh, as an as uh, as uh, on a on a work visa, mm -hmm. uh, he wouldn't be exposed to that uh, to that tax. Okay. Right? Yeah, I thought it was a federal law. Uh, I didn't know it was uh, Ontario thing because yeah. I was living in, in Ontario before, and then I joined it uh, during like when COVID started and everything. I was joining a lot of lives. Uh, and then I saw one guy uh, talking about mortgage and uh, like uh, when I saw this, OK, I, I need to wait for my PR. I don't want to pay extra $115,000 to get a home. It's all right, expensive. Yeah. So... Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I think and also you're not going to, by the way, I mean, even if the law applies to you, uh, it's important to understand it's not you're not going to it's, it's going to be withhold. You're not going to lose the money. So once you, 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 your status becomes uh, a permanent resident, then I think you're going to get the money back. You need you really need to speak to a lawyer or a mortgage broker about that. Mm -hmm. uh, there are so many uh, ways ways uh, around that. Okay, thank okay. you. Okay, you may want to. Uh, oh, okay, Uden have a question. Uh, again, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm. Go ahead, uh, Uden. I'm not sure if I'm uh, spelling your name correctly, pronouncing your name correctly. Go ahead. Do you want to speak? We're not hearing you uh, if you're speaking. I think Odin is, 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 is press the... Uh, My mistake? Yeah. Okay. Oh, uh, right. he took it off now. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Well, so, yes. uh, uh, let, let's, let's, let's move on then. So, so basically, as we said about competing goals, it's basically how you prioritize these uh, these goals. Which one? Uh, and just for argument's sake, if you have a hundred dollars uh, savings a week or a month or whatever, and you wanna you wanna uh, prioritize, then we recommend that you work with your own uh, financial advise, advisor and split the money between, let's say, ten dollars for that goal, fifty dollars for that goal, and, and so on and and and, uh, and so forth. Uh, so. Uh, Next, uh, yeah. Uh, so this we're going to spend a little bit uh, more time on 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 this the what we call the four uh, uses of cash. Uh, so cash has, of course, benefits and 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 trade offs. It it it, prov it provides uh, for your current spending needs, uh, and it can serve uh, as a cushion for the unexpected. Uh, when we talk about cash here. 
we are talking about the literal currency. Uh, we, like you have cash in the bank, uh, or you 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 have cash in a in a savings account, uh, and and uh, or a checking account or whatever, or cash in your in your hand. Uh, so money that is completely accessible, uh, completely liquid, you can get it uh, anytime. But when it comes to uh, uh, the longer term goals. It's important to understand that cash generally earn, uh, earns a very low rate of interest or low rate of return. So keeping the money, keeping the extra amount, which will come and cover that in a second uh, of cash not working for you uh, might actually be uh, not helping you achieve your uh, long long term goals. So let's uh, uh, it's it's we'll use these uh, uh, acronyms uh, use this and let's start. I'm going to start actually with the E. I'm not going to start with uh, with you. I'm going to start with the E because the E is the one that the 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 the, the everyday spending. This is th this is the most crucial, most important uh, need for, for any human being on on the planet that uh, they do have enough cash, enough money. To put food food on uh, on the table, to uh, pay for uh, utilities, to uh, to to buy medicine and and so on and uh, and so forth. So this is the first uh, uh, use uh, of cash, and as we said, it has to be kept uh, fully liquid, not invested. This this portion, the every the everyday spending, and our recommendation is you should keep one to two months of your your monthly after you do your budget which we we shared uh, uh, a little uh, a little while ago uh, you let's let's just throw a figure here let's assume you you spend five thousand dollars a month uh, and then we recommend that you should always keep if you are uh, I know this might not be the case with with many of you guys but assuming you have a pay a, a paycheck that comes in on a monthly or bi-weekly basis you have a job or you have your you are, you are self-employed or, or something so the money gets uh, replenished uh, on, on a regular basis we still recommend that you should keep one to two months of your monthly expenses in your checking account all right so maybe something maybe something emergency happened maybe your car broke down uh, your furnace broke down whatever uh, so you should keep one to two months of your uh, monthly uh, expenses based on the budget sheet that you use in your uh, checking checking account so this is number one uh, rule for uh, everyday spending uh, so if we move to uh yeah as you're you're yeah uh now if if we go to uh, uh the same one slide uh, slide nine uh it's a bit of oxymoron here uh having too much cash sitting down no, doing doing nothing is actually gonna especially especially in these years and these days of, of the very 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 low interest uh, rates uh, environment globally uh, so keeping so much cash is is actually hindering you achieving your long-term goal uh, and keep in mind something very, very important that inflation eats out your money is everybody familiar with the with the term inflation yeah it's like, i guess so okay so so inf so basically it's the, the the price increases of everything so inflation eats up your money and and now uh, i'm just trying to tie up what's happening in, in today's world with with, with this uh, webinar so now with with the covid uh with so many so so much so much printing of money globally between canada us everywhere in the world uh, uh we expect that inflation will be uh, uh, is coming and it's going to be uh, much stronger than we used to have over the past, let's say, uh, ten years. So if you're you, you kept aside your your one to two month expenses in your checking account and and you happen to be a millionaire, you have another hundred or or, or five hundred thousand dollars sitting in cash. Congratulations! But you every every year passes without this money growing it's actually losing its its value so keep keep that at, uh, uh, in mind 
so now to find out how how much is enough, uh, we we as as I, I I touch base on that, but I'm gonna again remind you: you go to your budget, you go through your budget, identify areas of improvement, come with a figure that you're comfortable with as a family, okay. And uh, maybe it's absolutely necessarily for you as a family to, uh, to I don't know, to, to do something that other families keep unnecessarily. That's really up to you. But other family, you decide what you want to do. And this is this figure, let's say, again, $5,000. You keep always 10000 Assuming, again, you're getting an income, a monthly income of five or six or $7,000. So you're, you're, you keep $10,000 in your checking account as your everyday uh, spend. Now, why do we want to go through the budget? Because remember, this is very, very, very uh, important uh, uh, statement that we use. It's not what you make, it is what you keep. OK, so so meaning each dollar you don't spend on bills or other expenses you can put to work for you and your uh, family and your future uh, goals. So that's uh, uh, how to uh, uh, to build your 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 reserve. Now, if we move to uh, another tip, I'm going to give you an another tip into uh, uh, into into that is we recommend that you split your uh, uh, or separate between your saving and checking. Uh, account and at every bank, any institute you're dealing with, you you would have uh, uh, saving account, high interest saving accounts, so, so something uh, uh, something like this. Uh, so keep the checking account, keep it for the own expenses. You pay your bills, you receive all your sources of uh, of income, your salary or any other investment or, or whatever uh, business revenues or whatever that comes to as an income as a household. The money goes out from. Uh, uh, from, from from this account, but the money that you don't intend to spend. Again, let me repeat that so I don't people don't get confused. You keep two months two months spending into that checking account, but the money that you don't intend to spend, you keep it in a saving account. You keep it out of your hand. Okay, so so that's that's very uh, uh, important for uh, for for you. And usually it costs it costs nothing. Usually at any bank. Uh, the first, the, the checking account is the one that they will charge you. Uh, I don't know, each bank differs. Uh, on the average, let's say it's $10 a month, but usually the saving account, it will be uh, for free. There will be no admin fee for, uh, for, 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 that, for that account. The other tip is uh, to, to be able to manage your, uh, your, your cash flow is try to set up your, your, your auto, uh, auto pay for uh, your bills, uh, hydro, phone bill, uh, car uh, installments or or lease payment. Uh, even sometimes, if you can do the rent as well, to straight to the uh, to to the uh, uh, landlord uh, bank account. So this will 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 you will avoid forgetting. You will avoid uh, in many institutes. Uh, uh, if you if you late, uh, they will charge you penalties, so you you will avoid that. Uh, uh, but it's it's also very important that you make sure that you have enough cash in the account uh, prior to the uh, to the to the transfer day, because if if you don't do that, uh, you may be uh, exposed to overdraft uh, charges from from your financial institute. OK, uh, the, 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 the following tip is, and I'm sure, I'm, I'm pretty sure all of you know that already, just, just a reminder, think about debit and credit cards as spending tools. Uh, if you have a budget, some people have this tendency, I'm, I'm sure most of you don't, but if you have a budget, I want to spend, I have this checking account, I want to spend that much money uh, uh, for X, X, Y, Z, and then I want to buy, I don't know, extra dinner outside. I want to buy this something from Amazon, which is like becoming everyday habit for everybody now in, in, the, in the lockdown. Then they use their uh, credit card. So treat the credit card 
as part of your total spending and make sure you will come will, will come to that uh, uh, how you pay your your debt on the uh, uh, credit cards Now, if, if we continue on the four uses of cash, we move to the uh, U. U is, is, is unexpected uh, expenses and emergency. And really, it's not a matter of if this happens, it's a matter of when will it happen. We are live, we, we are, we, we, as long as we are living, things unexpected that will happen. And these unexpected things will cost us money. Period. That's the fact of life. So, so again, we 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 recommend that you should keep uh, some emergency uh, uh, reserve. As you can see on the screen, uh, somebody might lose their job, and it's taking three months or four months to get a job. Major home repair, car broke down. Uh, unexpected medical uh, expenses and the list can go on so so we, we we really recommend that you you keep some cash for uh, uh, for, for that the question would be how much you wanna uh, how much you wanna keep so uh, we recommend three to six months of uh, living expense now remember the budget sheet that we did before it's we're gonna use the same one OK, so we say, OK, we, we started with an example that you you, you, you spend $5,000 uh, monthly. So we recommend that in, for the emergency fund, we call it emergency fund. You keep 15 between 15 to $30,000 uh, uh, emergency fund. It can be 15, it can be 20. Every family is uh, every family is, is different. All right. Now, this money should be invested. Because you never know when you're gonna use it. All right, you might use it uh, tomorrow. You might use it. Uh, I don't know. In in five years, you might never use it. Okay, because you might have enough cash afterwards you can use it. So so the thing is, what type of investment? Where would we we would we invest? We we invest in in uh, interest bearing products that actually easily liquidated like again uh, high interest saving account uh, maybe some sort of cashable GICs uh, this type of like cashable GICs most of the cashable GICs you can cash it in after 30 days at any bank any any institute you can go on and get some cashable GICs from there it has yes. to be cashable by the by the way Muhammad, what's yes your... okay that's a very good question thank you very much uh, GIC, GIC is stands for Guaranteed Investment Certificates. All right, you go to the bank, and it's usually five. The the the, the uh, if I remember correctly, the the minimum minimum purchases is five thousand dollars. So you you go to any bank, uh, uh, and banks would have different rates. So they will say if you keep it for one year, we'll give you I don't know one percent. Now with very low interest rates, it's become. So even embarrassing to talk about it, but uh, it, it is what it is. So so they, they will tell you maybe for one year it's one percent, for two years it's I don't know one one point two percent every year and all that. So these are locked. You cannot if it's one year or six months or 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 something else, it is it is locked. You cannot you cannot use it before the maturity. I don't recommend that. What we are recommending is all the banks also they have cashable GICs meaning meaning. You can buy it for five years, but you can cash it after 30 days. So in case something happens, uh, you can go and, and 30 days has passed. You can go and cash this money. They will give you interest based on a, on, on how many days you 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 were in uh, this this money was was uh, was in the GIC. So this is a form of just again. Remember, we have objective here. Money value is shrinking. Okay, so our objective. If we have one dollar, we want one dollar to grow at least to meet the, uh, the 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 inflation. All right. We know that by as a rule of thumb that interest rates in any country uh, uh, would always, most likely, would always be lower even than the inflation rate. But but you try to minimize your your loss. Okay. So that's something that 
uh, you should keep in mind. Right, so, so uh, uh, now. Uh, can, I, can I ask you something? Yeah, please go ahead. So, uh, so I'm from Brazil, so, and uh, I know back in Brazil, I have some investments. And I know there we have a kind of a fund that protects me against in, uh, insolvency. So what kind of fund or things uh, we have here in Canada that would okay. uh, protect me? Like right. over there, I think we have like a, until if we invest until 250,000 uh, reals, that's our money mm -hmm. there. So okay. I, yeah, a bit I, to Brazil, I, I know. Not really, okay. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, right. So, so here in Canada, all the banks uh, are covered by something called CDIC. Okay, so basically, you are covered for each sin number. Uh, you're covered for up to a hundred thousand dollars for non-registered account, and hundred thousand uh, dollars for registered accounts. And don't ask me about the registered and non-registered right now because I'm not going to cover this today. <laughs> okay, but it's different types of accounts. So basically. You are covered up to hundred thousand dollars per bank, okay? And this is for the cash or the cash in the bank. So, as you said, if if let's say I don't know any of the big banks, RBC or TD, went belly up, so your money is covered up to a hundred a uh, hundred thousand dollars. Now, if you're talking about investment, so you 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 want to invest <clears throat> like in our financial institute, <coughs> for example or any other financial institute, most of the financial institutes are a member of something called CIPF, Canadian Investment Protection Fund. So mm -hmm. your money is, is protected up to a million dollars. And now it's it's very important to understand uh, this is not doesn't protect you from profit or loss. It protects you if, let's say, Edward Jones went bank. So 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 the, the, the this fund covers you up to a million dollars. Does this answer your question? Yeah, sure. Thank you. OK. Just a time uh, check, you know, we have 15 minutes, but uh, uh, go ahead. Who, who's, yeah, uh, OK. Who? I don't think we'll be able to finish everything uh, today, but I'm going to move as as fast as I yeah. <laughs> as, as I can. So the the uh, the last uh, uh, sorry, the following the next one is a specific short term saving goals. Uh, S stands for, uh, it's a slide 15, specific, uh, uh, sh and this is, uh, you, you, you have some, uh, sh as we said, some short-term uh, uh, goals, something you're going to achieve or you want to uh, uh, achieve in uh, a year or, or two or, or something like this, like, uh, as you can see on the slide, your a new car, vacation, wedding, something like this, you also keep it in a very low uh, risk investment environment. It can be some bonds. It can be again some GICs, uh, bond funds, or something like this, where the the volatility uh, and 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 the, the the potential for loss uh, of money is uh, very uh, very low. Uh, the the uh, the la the the last one here is uh, source of investment. And this is a, a little bit confusing. So when we say cash as a source of investment, it's kind of confusing because when we talk about investment, uh, uh, generally what we understand, what most people understand, investment is either stocks or bonds. Uh, it's either uh, you invest in, in equity, you invest in, in you buy a, 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 a let's widen the scope, let's you buy a home or a, a investment property or something like this, or you buy bonds where it's 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 interest bearing purpose. But actually, uh, some of the some of the 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 uh, the portfolio uh, management uh, and, and diversification tools, which I even use, uh, keep in the portfolio. Let's say you have a portfolio of hundred thousand dollars, and you invest fifty percent in, in in cash and fifty percent in, in in fixed income. Then we always keep in the fifty percent of fixed income, maybe uh, five or ten percent of cash, doing nothing. But it's part of the asset allocation of the portfolio. So uh, these are the main uh, uh, four uses of cash every day. Spend uh, and. 
uh, the 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 other one uh, is the specific short term investment, unexpected uh, expenses and emergency, and then as part of the uh, asset allocation, our source of uh, of investment. Uh, I'm gonna move uh, quickly here about. Uh, the the credit and I think we're going to end with uh, with this one uh, the, about mastering uh, uh, credit so uh, um, uh, and and debit so basically here in in, in Canada and for, for now uh, almost everywhere in the world uh, having some sort of a debt is 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 inevitable so so there uh, actually we believe there are good debts and bad debts what do we mean by good debt is, is, is that uh, is can that be good? Yes, it can be. If you are buying your your your, your mortgage, if you are uh, uh, financing your car, or or if you are uh, going to university and you're getting a, a student loan, uh, really this couldn't be uh, a bad a bad debt. You will not be able to live uh, the lifestyle you aspire for if you don't have some sort of a debt of a debt level. So this is what we mean by good debt. Now, on the other hand, if if you are excessively using your credit card and you're paying 18, 20% interest rate on, on, on the credit card, if you uh, keep transferring balances from uh, one credit card to the other uh, to, 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 to pay the, the minimums, then you you are in, uh, in, a, in a problem. So, uh, Really, we need you, you need to understand uh, what what uh, the, the, these these kinds of uh, of of debts. And uh, I'm gonna jump quickly through 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 that and move you uh, to the implication of that. So let's assume somebody has so much credit, uh, so much debt. Other than the implication that he pays massive interest on that money, and uh, the fact that they they are that really hindering their their their, their ability to utilize their money in in the best uh, possible way, uh, it might actually uh, affect their uh, credit scores and credit uh, reports. So if you move to slide twenty one, uh, what is uh, what is the credit score and the credit uh, uh, reports? Your credit profile. It will be the one who determines what type of loans you can get, how much money you can you can borrow, and how expensive uh, will it be. So the better your credit history, uh, the more options you will have. The lenders will be happy to uh, to to give you uh, to give you money at a lower cost. All right, and and that that's a general international uh, rule. Like I'm, I'm just gonna give you an an, an example here, if uh, a country like Canada or or, or US, they issue uh, bonds. The interest rate is going to be like one and a half percent because everybody globally knows that this country is able to pay back its money. But if if, if a country like Venezuela, for example, uh, wanna wanna borrow money, they will have to give on the on their uh, on their bonds maybe 15, 20 percent because there is a great doubt that this country will be able to pay to pay back their uh, their debt. So it's the same uh, with with humans, with us uh, as 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 persons or as investors, uh, when when you want to borrow money, lenders would look at you from that way. So <clears throat> the the credit score is a range between three hundred to nine to nine hundred. So your credit score is is anywhere between three hundred to nine hundred. And generally, if you are near or, or above seven hundred and fifty. Uh, you would be able to get the best uh, best rates available in, in the market. If you are below that, you might be able, or most likely, if like let's say you are 650 or something, you you you're probably gonna get uh, uh, the same loan, but at a higher interest rate because that th that score indicates that you might have a high, the lower the score, in case you have a higher risk of default, and no no borrower would want to. Uh, uh, want you to default on their uh, uh, on the on their on their uh, payments. Uh, so 
how the, what affect that score? What what does it uh, what what constitutes uh, and affect that score? First, uh, your history of of uh, of on time payments. If if you have a credit card, if you have a, a loan, if you any kind of of uh, of debt, you have to pay at least the minimum on time. Uh, late payment may affect your uh, your, your credit uh, worthiness, and it happened. It, ha it, it keeps happening, and it, I'm I'm sure it happened with every one of us that sometimes, I mean, who have been here for long enough, sometimes you you have a credit an old credit card or an old bill with maybe five dollars on it, and you forget about it, and it hits your uh, your your credit score. So it's very very important. Uh, now, also your credit utilization, and that's that's important point that I want to stand here. And it's it's very confusing for so many people. Let's assume you have a credit card with a credit limit of ten thousand dollars. Now, the the what affects your credit score is how much money you used from that credit card. So, ideally, you should have you should use less than uh, uh, fifty percent of of that credit uh, uh, available for you. So, if it's the limit is ten thousand, ideally you should use less than five thousand dollars now the lower the the lower the usage of your credit uh, 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 available the the higher potential you get for the higher score now on the other hand if you have two credit cards and that's very important guys to understand if you have two two credit cards one of them has ten thousand and you only have five thousand the other one has another ten thousand and you never use and you decide to close it down that's not a wise thing to do because that will affect negatively your credit score. It can bring down your credit score because the way they look at it is in the first scenario, A, you have $5,000 from a total credit available of $20,000. Now, if you close one of them now, so that means you're using 25%. If you close one of the credit cards or one of the uh, line of credits, so that means you now you only have $10,000 10, 10, $10, uh, credit available for you, so means you're utilizing 50%. So keep that in mind. All right. Uh, the other thing is your length of credit history. So how long have you been uh, uh, dealing with that institute, with that uh, bank, or with that car, uh, car uh, whatever uh, dealership? Many years, and you have been uh, uh, effective with them, and 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 relationships goes goes for a long time. Uh, now. One 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 other thing that might affect your uh, credit worthiness, and it's very important. It happens especially for people who uh, come new to the country and they wanna uh, buy their first car or buy their first home. They start shopping around and going from one bank to the other. That would affect your credit score because every that's called a hard hit. So every time you apply for a car loan or a, or a mortgage. You use cer certain points uh, for when the bank or the lender check on your on your credit uh, score. So uh, ideally, if you're buying your home, go print your credit report and give it to your uh, institute, a fresh one, and say, "This is my credit. Don't do don't don't do a, a hit on my uh, credit." Uh, Mohammed, uh, seems like we, we lost you. Are you there? Can you guys hear me? Yes, I can hear you. We can hear yeah. you. I think maybe we lost Mohammed here. It's almost about time. So, um, does anyone have any questions uh, to Mohammed? Uh, Sorry, uh, breaking up. Out. No, I'm here. Um, hello? Yeah. Can you hear me, guys? Yeah, no. Yes. You can yes. Hear me, yeah. yeah. So we're almost on time. Mohammed, do you want to wrap it up and maybe um, go for questions yeah. in the it's, last uh, five minutes? Yeah. yeah, the last one is the last one is the type of credit used. So the, the, the one that affects is if you're having a long term credit like mortgage, uh, revolving uh, uh, credit, different types of credit will affect your credit score uh, differently. 
Uh, if you want to get your credit report, there are basically in Canada there is two sources for uh, to, uh, that 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 actually measure your uh, your, your credit, uh, Equifax and uh, TransUnion. So any any bank uh, or any lender would uh, would use uh, in Savani. Hello. Yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you. Yeah, we can hear you, Mohammed. So if you if, if if you move to the next slide quickly, this will be the last uh, last slide. To get your credit report, you can get it from either TransUnion or Equifax. All right. So I think that's the uh, the last bit uh, in in today's session. If you wanna uh, have some questions. Yeah. If anyone have any questions, uh, please come off mute or, you know, put it in the chat. Um, we had a question before by Uden uh, about, you know, um, money. He want to, you know, grow to be able to really buy a house. I think, you know, maybe he can take this offline with you, Mohammed, uh, if he want to connect with you. I put your link in profile on the chat. Um, anyone else has any questions? Okay. Yeah. Um, just a quick question. So you you were talking about the different uh, credits and the uh, credit score and uh, what kind of thing uh, will bring my my credit score down. So what kind of thing uh, if I have a bad credit score, what kind of thing I can do to improve my credit score? If you're in a bad credit score, so uh, basically. Credit usually gets updated uh, every six months. So, so within this six months period, what uh, what you can do is you you, you try to pay off your uh, your, your outstanding uh, debt. Uh, if I mean, if you have in, in your in your credit card, as as I said, the example is you already have to, your limit is ten thousand, and uh, you're, you're you're using nine thousand or something. You try to bring that down to be below 5,000. Uh, of course, it, it's different differ from one case to the other. I know a person uh, who, who took a who took a loan uh, from 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 an, an institute and a small loan and he kept paying uh, on a regular on a regular basis. Uh, so that improved their, uh, their their credit score. Bottom line, payment on time. Don't go over limit. Reduce the the limit of the credit cards. If you can get another, uh, if your credit is bad because of a credit card, try to get another one with a bigger limit, or even a small limit, and never use it. That will 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 open uh, or or reduce the utilization of your of your credit. Okay, thank you. No problem. Okay, I guess you know it's time for the selfie. If you want to come on camera and you know. Show us your great smile, then we can, you know, take that selfie again as a memory uh, for everybody. And uh, thank you so much for that. So we'll give it a few seconds more if anyone wants to join. Uh, it would be great. Again, this is um, a memory that we will remember when we all thank get you very tired. Much, guys. You're welcome. Thank you, Mohammed. Okay, anyone else? No? Okay, so if you want to uh, prepare your smile, one, two, three. Smile. We lost you, Thomas, uh, in the picture. Let me let me do it again. Sorry. <laughs> one again. One, two, three. Smile. Okay. Now we have you. Okay. okay. Cool. Thank you. <laughs> Thank Beautiful. you. Thank you so much, Mohammed. Thanks everybody for Thank showing. Thank you, Mohammed. And, and guys, uh, I, I've been to Brazil. I love it so much, actually. I've been to uh, Sao Paulo and, and, other, and other places. So I'm happy to, uh, to be chatting for, so with some friends from Brazil. Oh, thank you. That was great. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Bye. Good night. Good night. Enjoy the night. Take care. Bye-bye.